Hello everyone and welcome to the Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis Tutorial brought to you by the Civil Engineering Essentials channel. I hope you enjoy the video. In this video, we are going to take a look on different aspects of modeling a swimming pool in Autodesk Robot. To start with, I am going to select my 3D building design. So once this is running, we are going to model a swimming pool which has the di dimensions of 7 meters by 4 meters by 2 meters. So, well, in my x axis I have 0 and 7, in my y axis I have 0 and 4, and in my z axis I have 0 and 2. I'll apply that, close, and go to my view to continue my work. So, to minimize the amount of problems I have, I will, of course, now assume a thickness for my swimming uh, pool. So, I'll just say thickness 250, which will have a thickness of 250. So, I'll add basically that. Close, select my thickness 250, start drawing my walls. Of course, my horizontal slab here is not checked because I'm not drawing horizontal pieces. I'll start by drawing in such a way that my circumferential direction is going to be the X. So I just click 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, and so on. And you can see if I open my local axis directions, you can see that the local X direction follows the circumference of my pool. It goes in a counterclockwise manner, whereas the z-axis goes into sometimes sometimes into the pool and sometimes out of the pool. As for the connection of those walls with the ground, I'm going to assume that they are fixed support, meaning that I just apply me a fixed support like this and click on each of the lower edges of each of those four walls. So I have to, of course, move a little bit and apply all those reactions or all those supports fantastic so now i have my supports now one of the problems i have seen in many different tutorials is that they only focus on the modeling of hydrostatic pressure meaning the water pressure they never check out the pressure applied from the outside into the tank because the tank or basically in this case my swimming pool has two cases of loading the first case is a dead load case and this happens when you have the fluid, in this case water, full in the tank. And the second case should be when you have an empty case, meaning that there is absolutely nothing inside the swimming pool. Now, to be on the safe side, when I have fluids inside the tank, I will assume that there is nothing outside the tank to maximize my moment and maximize reinforcement on the inside of the tank. Because when you apply fluid loads, the inside of the tank needs to be reinforced. Then, I will assume that there is no fluid inside the tank and that only exterior soil pressure exists, which will provide you with the maximum reinforcement on the outside of the tank or of the swimming pool walls. Now, in this video, I am only going to touch on the modeling aspects of those tanks. I will not be going through the design. Maybe in another video, I will. And uh, for now, I will assume that my fluid load is a dead load and my soil load is a dead load. Please notice that this, this could be different from one code to the other. So I will not be dealing with the classification of loads. I'll just open me two cases and apply the fluid pressure on one case and the soil pressure on the other case. And I will even apply me a third case where I have live loads. And I will explain this in a moment. So I'll just apply me a third case and call this live load. I'll add that. All right, so let's apply us some hydrostatic pressure. I'll go to my dead load one because I said that this is going to be the case where I'm going to apply me the hydrostatic pressure. I'll go to surface loads, hydrostatic pressure, and basically start applying or implementing my numbers. Now, first of all, there is no uh, pressure value here. This is only used if the vessel itself is pressurized. For example, if you have a tank that stores liquid gas, then you have a uh, pressure of the... Uh, gas above the liquid and the pressure of the liquid itself. Now I'm assuming that of course this is a swimming pool meaning that it is it has the pressure here which is the atmospheric pressure meaning that there is no pressure difference. For the unit weight of the liquid it's water so it should be 1000 kilograms per meter cube however I'll keep it as 1050 because I'm assuming that my water is not 100% pure so I will take this into account. For my water level well the swimming pool was 2 meters high. Now, you can perfectly put 1.8 here, assuming that there is 20 centimeters of extra wall because you don't want to spilling to happen frequently. I'll just keep it 2 meters to be on the safe side. 
Negative Z means that the load is applied from the negative Z to the positive Z. If you click now add and click here, you can see that the force is from the outside to the inside, from the negative Z to the positive Z. Same here, here, and here. And there is something you should note. You should note that for two of those panels, it seems to be fine because the force goes from the negative Z to the positive Z, so from the, outs from the inside to the outside. Whereas for those two panels, it doesn't work because, because once again, it goes from the negative Z to the positive Z. However, in this case, it's from the outside to the inside. And last time I checked, fluid does do the opposite. So we have to do that. You have to repair that. To fix that, you have two options. The first option is during the definition to apply this in the positive Z axis. And the second option is to go to geometry uh, properties and select local panel direction, flipping the Z axis and asking it to flip for this panel and for this panel, and you can see that the loads automatically got fixed. Fantastic, we have our first load case. For the second load case, I'm assuming that there is soil outside the swimming pool, so we need to apply that. I'll go to loads, uh, special loads, and select me some soil pressure. Of course, there is a previous video dealing with retaining walls where this was explained. For now, I'll just very quickly ask it to, to some parameters like this and say, well, my soil height is at two meters. It's not at three, it's at two meters. I'm gonna leave it as at rest because I'm not assuming that the swimming pool is going to move. It's gonna stay put in its place. So it's gonna be at rest. There is no inclination and there is no wall inclination. And well, I think we are done with this. I just go to my loads, check out if I want to add anything. Now here you can add, if you want your live load, but you cannot simply mix your live load with your soil load. It doesn't work like that. You go to results. Well, you can see that the soil the loads are calculated. You go to apply. And now you start applying. So let's just quickly select this. And hit the apply button and discuss this. Well, it seems everything to be fine. Uh, the loads are applied from the outside to the inside. Exactly as we are expecting it to be. All right. So we have our second load, which is the soil load. The third load is going to be the live load. You see... This, um, this swimming pool is actually in a house, so there are people around it, so there is live load around it. Live load is actually a surcharge on top of the soil, which gets translated to the sides of this water tank or swimming pool by means of my uh, soil pressure coefficients, which could be calculated from ranking. Now, you can perfectly calculate this yourself by using all means of geotechnical engineering. And let's say that for the sake of argument, my ranking pressure is 0.3, meaning that whatever vertical pressure I have, 0.3 goes into the horizontal. So you can actually go like this and select the surface load, select the uniform planar load, and simply multiply your live load, which is three kilonewtons by 0 0.3. 0 0.3 is only a value I have assumed, meaning that you have negative 0.9 because 3 multiplied by 0.3 is 0.9. I'm using the local axis because I'm using Z in the negative local axis. I'll add that, select all this stuff, apply, and now I have a div load representation on the uh, tank. So now I'll go to my fluid uh, forces because I want to talk about the results. So if I run the analysis, let's hope that the mesh looks nice. No, the mesh is too coarse. I don't like that. It's like, it's really edgy. No, so I'll just basically make my mesh smaller. You can do this by going to the work, uh, to the job preferences. This was covered in a video linked above about uh, plates. So take a look on that video if you want. So now I have applied and changed my mesh preferences. You can see that the mesh got finer and the deflection shape looks smoother. I want to discuss a little bit about the results. So if you go to results, maps, go to moment XX, you will see now the moment that controls the reinforcement in the horizontal direction. If you go to moment YY, you can see the moment that controls the reinforcement in the vertical direction. Of course, you can you use panel cuts to visualize those moments. And how do you do that? Well, you go to geometry, uh, sorry, you go to results, uh, panel cuts. I'm gonna do me three cuts. One of them is going to be in this direction because I want to cut the vertical walls. So it's in the X, Z axis like this passing through the center i'll apply that now i need to of course switch my moment which i see here let's take a look i want to see moment yy because those cuts are they make sense when you have yy so i click on that go to detailed and ask it to show me the moment yy which is a, a semi-cantilever moment 
uh, I will do another cut so I call the definition say new click on parallel to YZ click on this center point hit the apply button and once again see MYY let me check if this is MYY yes it is and finally I want one panel cut parallel to my XY plane so it's a horizontal cut and I will pass it near the middle of the height like this hit the apply button and this time I want this to show me the moment in the XX direction so now I have everything I want and you can actually start visualizing things now first of all you can see that the moment in the XX axis determines the horizontal reinforcement you can see that in the middle of the wall the, the main reinforcement is going to be on the outside of the tank same in all walls in the middle of the wall the reinforcement should be on the outside of the tank or of the swimming pool whereas in the or near the corners the design and moment and reinforcement is going to be on the inside of the tank this is for the horizontal moments for the vertical moments well you can see that both directions get moments so both directions need to be designed with special emphasis on the moments near the base of the wall you can see that those moments are large and they need to be accounted for yeah well that's it now please notice that this is not enough because you not only have your water or hydrostatic pressure cases you also have the case of soil pressure which is the exact opposite of your hydrostatic pressure and this is what most tutorials on the internet miss just miss that the outside soil can pressurize the wall inside and this becomes a significant uh, load case whenever you empty the tank or whenever you empty the swimming pool for maintenance for example so this is something you should calculate and uh, the last one is for the live load of course it's similar to the soil but it needs to be added in the design load combination which is something I will leave for you to explore so yeah that's a very quick tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it and that it was beneficial for you. If it was beneficial for you, please, of course, consider liking, sharing, subscribing. It does help a lot and increases the reach of this channel. This is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel, and we will catch you in the next one.